Welcome to Next Q. I'm here live with my buddy, Michael Pope. I'm Stephen Garner, life coach, motivational speaker. I'm going to share with you my cues for living a great life to help you to grow through your challenges. This evening, we're focusing on how to get out of debt fast. And I'm so excited. I got my man, Michael, here. And this brother and his wife paid off 119 thousand dollars in 11 months that's crazy <laughs> and i'm, I'm just i'm just it so felt crazy through the journey <laughs> <laughs> well man i mean you know like we're in a pandemic right now and there are so many people going through so many challenging things and you know the reason we're doing this is we want to help people to overcome their financial challenges wherever they are in their journey and so you know, I want to give Michael the opportunity to tell his story so you can get insight and learn how did he and his beautiful queen overcome that financial challenge. Um, Michael, why don't you start out by telling your story, man, and just introduce yourself, tell a little bit about you, and uh, just let the people know why I love you so much. Man. <laughs> awesome, awesome. But first of all, Stephen, thank you for having me on your show. I mean, I've known Stephen Kim for well over a decade now. I um, absolutely love these guys, and I'm truly happy to be sharing with your community here. I'm Michael Pope. I'm a software developer by trade. So the, for the last 25 years, I've worked as a software developer for International Paper. My wife and I have been married for going on 23 years now, have a family of five, well, three boys. So we're a family of five. And I am truly passionate about this subject of helping people understand money. Because for years, and I mean decades of our marriage, we struggle with money. That's because we didn't really understand what we were doing. And so, Steve, I'll take you back to that moment when we were $119,000 in debt. The, the sad thing about it is we didn't even realize how much debt we were in. Oh, you, was, didn't, you, you didn't realize it? We knew we were in debt. Oh we knew God. it was bad, but we didn't know how much. Oh you know, because you... It takes a whole lot to put all them numbers together. Right. And it was it was truly it was truly painful. I tell you, it was it was the winter of 2015 and we started feeling financial pressure. Mm -hmm. It was getting close to Christmas. And you know how you want to buy your kids gifts and things. And I, and I remember my wife Sonia coming to me and she said, I, I'm thinking about getting a part time job. Now, see, at that point, my wife had been a stay at home mom for the last, I think, um, eight or nine years at that point. And the thought of her, I mean, she's got a college degree, very educated, very smart, but just the thought of her having to go back to work after being a stay at home mom, that hurt me as a man. Because I was like, you know, I'm the sole provider here, taking, so I'll be taking care of my family. And I was making good income, you know, I was making a little over 600, a little, a little over six figure income at the time. And I was working hard, Steve. Yeah. I, mean, I, was, I was working hard. And so I felt bad because as hard as I was working, we just couldn't get ahead. It's like every single month we ran out of money before the end of the month. So you can't, you, you, and listening to you, it's like you're saying, you just can't out earn your debt if you don't understand how to get out of debt. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, you know, we, we thought we could for years. We tried to out earn it, but yeah, it, it didn't work. All right. You know, like, you know, I get a pay raise here. We get a bonus over here, but our mindset hadn't changed. And so we struggled with it. So let me just give you guys an idea of where we were. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Bring us into it, man. I want to, I want to hear the, the juicy stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So can you add it to the stream for us? Yes, sir. There we go. All right. So back and so, so back in March 2016, my wife and I signed up for our first financial peace class through Dave Ramsey's group. And that's where we realized we were $119,000 in debt. And so this is kind of how our debt broke down. We had a condo that sat empty. Steve, it, it literally sat empty for 22 months. 22 months? 22 months. So we didn't have renters in there. Oh. We had it, on, it was for sale. So that meant double. That mean we had double mortgage, double utility bills condo fee plus that it's the regular upkeep of keeping it active for the sale credit card debt we had eight cars you know thirty nine thousand dollars of credit card debt 
You had yeah. eight cards? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's crazy, man. A signature loan, $8,400. And then we had a car loan, $12,000. And, and, and Steve, you know, you've seen the cars we drive. So, I'm you know, there. and, you know, and it, it, we refinanced the car. So we had our cars that were paid off. So this is how bad we were. We took two titles to the bank and took a loan. So two paid off cars, took them to the bank, their title, and, and gave it to the bank for a loan. And at the time, that loan was down to twelve thousand dollars. Now, now you gotta, you gotta, you gotta let your audience know that you you were driving a luxury vehicle. Exactly. That's 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 that gives you context. Exactly. I mean, I'm not, I'm okay. not you. I'm just saying, like it, yeah. it wasn't like it was a BMW or Mercedes. Exactly. I mean, it was a loan. On, <laughs> yeah. Like, so we, we had we had a Honda Pilot. Yeah. And we had a Honda CRV. My CRV. When I got rid of the CRV, it had two hundred ninety-eight thousand miles on it. So it's it had a lot of miles on it, even when we took it in with the title. They didn't give us much for as a loan, but that's what we did. So that's that's how bad we were. You know, we took two paid-off cars and gave them to the bank essentially as collateral for a loan. Now, now you know, you know, we should pause here because on a serious note, eighty percent of the population is in debt, and there are this this is a lot of people's situation. It may not be exactly like yours. But this is people watching this right now. I want you to understand this is why we're having this discussion. We want to provide you with knowledge and wisdom to help you to break those chains. So I just wanted to make that point, man, because this is a real serious thing. And we're very passionate about helping people to overcome this challenge. Continue on, my brother. Absolutely. And if you're watching this live right now, I'd love to hear where you're from. So please, you know, add something to the chat. Let us know that you're with us just so we know. Yeah, so there's there's my wife there. You know, yeah, we were so stupid with our finance. We were driving Hondas, but we had our financial backs up against the wall. And that's what we were doing, right? So thank you, sweetie, for saying that. The queen, yeah. The queen. <laughs> yeah exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, and so that's, that's the life we were living. And in fact, we were kind of, you were using our credit cards as our emergency fund. So that means if an emergency popped up, Steve, we would just swipe because we had great credit. And we mm -hmm. had lots of credit cards that you saw. We saw eight credit cards. We would take those credit cards and we would swipe, swipe, swipe like most people. Anytime we needed something big, because we had great credit scores, we would use that like a sinking fund. So if we needed a new HVAC system, we'd just take out a new loan because our credit was good. If we needed a new vehicle, we'd take out a new loan. That's the problem you, we were living in. Michael, you, you, this is like... The modern day version of robbing Peter to pay Paul. You hope Paul don't start tripping on you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> Peter's gonna get a black eye. I mean, <laughs> this is reality, man. I mean, I remember when I used to have multiple credit cards, and I was like, man, this I can't, I can't sustain this, you know. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Laurie from Memphis. All right. Got people all around the road watching, Steve. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, Lucinda from Maryland. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. You have to add some of the comments to the, the stream for us. But that's really, so that's really how we were living. And me as a man at the time, it was a lot of stress. Now, no one around us knew that we were going through this. Like, we, we didn't tell our family members. We didn't tell our friends. Because we've always had a positive mindset, so we just went with it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, HVAC tires as well as gro gas, groceries, everything was getting swiped. If Mercy. Mercy, everything was getting swiped. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> wow. and that's just how we were living, unfortunately. Such inspired. Thank you, Arnika. That's powerful. But it's, I tell you, it was so emotional knowing that we didn't, that we didn't know what to do. And like I said, when, when Slane was asking about getting a second job, I looked at it. We looked at what our options were and it financially, it wasn't even going to make sense for her to get a second job. Our kids were still little. So that means we'd probably have to hire a babysitter and our right. babysitter probably would make more than right. she was making it as a part-time job. Right. And if she had to go back to work full time then you know we'd have had to pay for child care and schooling and so that would have been a big adjustment for us and so that really wasn't an option for us let me ask you this question i mean the emotional strain had to be like a killer in and of itself 
I mean, how did you how did you deal with that every day, man? Like emotionally, what what I mean, <laughs> thinking about all the debt you have and the weight of it, how did you cope with that? I say it was it was it was tough. However, because we were still seeing success in other areas of our life. We, we were making we were making great income. You know, we have great friends. You know, we have a great church environment. So we have a strong foundation where we didn't really let the stress get to us, which is probably why we end up in so far in debt because mm. we we're never behind on our bills. Mm. Like, you, you know, I think if, if we had to have people calling us asking for money, that might have put more pressure on them. But because we knew we could make the payments, because even when we were swiping, we knew that next month a check was coming and it was going to be able to cover that. Hmm. So, so, so we really weren't concerned about it as much until until they got to that point where we were started really looking at the numbers and realized that man, we we're, we're running out of out of money. And, and I tell you, we had a one big wake up call, Stephen. We were on a road trip. We were coming back to Ohio on a Sunday. Oh, yeah, that story, man. Tell them yeah. that story. So on that Sunday, and our car overheated on a Sunday. Car overheated. So you just imagine it's it's tough trying to find someone to even look at your vehicle on a Sunday anyway. On a Sunday. Yeah. Right. We found somebody. We were we weren't close to family at the time, so we couldn't really call anybody to come help us out. We pulled into a station and they said they could work on it for us. But you know, it takes money, right? <laughs> you know, we're pulling out credit cards. Most of our cards were maxed out. Mm. Sonya actually had to call up our credit card company and ask them to extend our credit. Mm, on Sunday? On a Sunday. Thankfully, Mercy. they were open. She called. I mean, and they, they, they would only give us a little bit. I mean, it was, yeah, that was it was a painful moment for savings account. Horace. Horace, do you have I wish. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. So basically. Okay, let's talk about the savings for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started our FEU class back in March 2016. One of the things they asked us to do was to calculate how much we had in savings. I think we put maybe four or five hundred dollars on the slip of paper, but that was really four or five hundred dollars that was in our checking account that was allocated to go somewhere else. Oh wow. Now we did have some retirement set up, but no real savings account, Horace. We we didn't know better. And this is two people with college degrees, <laughs> six-figure income, but we didn't know anything about really having a savings. We had small investments through our 401k, but that was about it. Mm. Right? If we had to, we probably could have pulled it out with a penalty, but that's that's where we were living. But thankfully, we signed up for Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University, and we started learning how to properly think about money how to have a, a clear understanding of it. And I'm going to talk today about three tips that we did. Yeah, give us, give us some solutions, man, because that's what I really want to hit home today because it is not impossible to get out of debt wherever you are. That's what we want to really drive home and encourage people. Absolutely. To get out of debt. Yeah. Yeah. And so once we started applying those principles, we paid off all of our debt in 11 months. We applied to be on the Dave Ramsey show. We were on the Dave Ramsey show on July 10th, 2017. Um, that was an amazing experience. Just being on his show and meeting him. Last year, 2020, we had the opportunity to be on CBN 700 Club. They actually featured us on. And that was actually a pretty cool experience because they actually sent a, a video crew here to our home here in Ohio. And we set up. It was a hot summer day. <laughs> But they set up for us. I mean, they had their mask on and they recorded us. I mean, that was a really cool experience for our family. But it was just us giving a, getting an opportunity to share our story and our journey of, you know, of, of how God really blessed us through this whole process. So Sonia said, you know, we continue to spend money. Exactly. You know, we kept spending when Sonia came home from our job, we kept spending money like we still had our income. Mm. And as we had, you know, child number two, Charles, and then child, child number three, Matthew, we were still having expenses mm. and we didn't pay attention to them. So when you know when you hear people do that debt screen on yeah. Dave Ramsey, is does that does it really work? And 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 I, I really want you to like 
you know, tell us like, does that really work? You know, you got your three reasons mm -hmm. or three ways to get out. Um, just, just, just kind of walk us through it, man. Yeah, it absolutely. The whole process works and it, it was truly motivating for us. So let's just talk about the three things real quick. So uh -huh. number one is to make a decision. That was the, the probably the biggest thing that we did. We looked at where we were and we signed up for Dave Ramsey's financial peace. We made a decision that we were going to move forward. We made a decision that we were no longer going to accept any type of debt. And Napoleon Hill says successful people make decisions quickly and firmly. Unsuccessful people make decisions slowly and then they change them often. And mm -hmm. so we didn't want to be like that. We made our decision firm and we said, no matter what, no matter the sacrifice, we are getting out of debt. And we knew that we were going to follow his program without compromise. It, it wasn't easy. It wasn't always fun. There were some fun things that we had to give up in order to stick to his plan. But, but it was only for a short period of time. So, I mean, we were completely focused because we gave it up. And so here, here are some of the things that I think really stop people when it comes to making a decision, right? Because the advertisers are constantly going to market to you things like three easy payments or 0% interest, 90 days, same as cash, or, you know, a BOGO vacation sale, all types of advertisements. <laughs> and we made a decision. We said, okay, we're not going to take it. So I don't care if it is, it, I don't care if it does look like it's going to possibly save us money. Cause I understand I've heard people, I've heard the people say, you know, or oh, I can get, you know, 0% for, you know, two years. I can take that money and I can invest it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But the problem right. with that is it's the habit that you're forming. That habit of, you know, taking something before you've truly earned it. You know, and we didn't want to do that. That's a good <laughs> exactly. point. Exactly. How do how they know those payments are going to be easy, right? Yeah. Hey, that's a good point. Some people think, well, it's on sale, so I'm going to get it for less. But you're still spending money and a habit of spending yeah. money is not helping you break the habit of being in debt. Yes. So. And let's face it, 2020 hit a lot of people hard because there were people who were betting on future income. Yes. Right. I mean, they had already made these promises. OK, I've got these easy payments and they were betting on future income. And then what happened? Events got closed. Right. If you work in the hotel industry and your hotel says, OK, you're going to be furloughed for the next month with no payment or lower payment. Right. That happened to so many different industries. So, you subscribe, to, so you, you subscribe to um, you got to have the cash on hand, basically. Yes. You, you want to focus on that because, you know, mm -hmm. you don't know what the future holds. And, that, and that's what I'm you say. Absolutely. You want to have a savings. And if you, for us, if we can't pay it in cash, we're not going to get it. Hmm. And wow. we've had to delay some things. <laughs> that requires I mean, there's been vacations that we put off for a year, <laughs> things we didn't do just because we didn't have the money for it. Right? That, that's a that's that's a whole nother level. That requires some serious discipline right there. Yes. If you want to buy a house, but it is, I'm telling you, it can be fun. Mm -hmm. It was so cool. I was out of town for work one time, and I was in Memphis for work, and we needed a new vehicle. Sonia, stay at home mom, no job, goes down to the vehicle. You know, she's because we saw a really good deal online. She went to go check it out. It was great. She said, okay, we're going to take it. I'm going to go get the cashier's check and I'm going to come back. There, of course, they looking at her like, you're lying. You know I mean? Like they didn't really, they didn't believe she was going to come back, right? With, with the money. She goes to the bank, comes back. They don't know Sonia. Exactly. She comes back. They don't, know she's, they don't know she's the Boom. queen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it was it was cool because we we needed it, right? We we. I mean, it was so cool because we needed a vehicle and we we had saved up the cash for it. So, I mean, it was it was a it was a blessing, but it was a perfect timing. But it felt so good to be able to walk away knowing that the vehicle was ours, the title was ours. Awesome. And that was just such a good feeling. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. that was step number one is we made a decision that no matter what, we're not going to incur any more debt. No matter what. Yes, sir. And I think if, if you develop that mindset, yeah. then at a minimum, just from making minimum payments, your debt is going to slowly go away. If yes, you sir. choose yes, not sir. to bring on any more. 
It's, so th that's good to say. It's an incremental game. Exactly. Every step counts. Every little mm -hmm. thing you do, and you need to celebrate those small victories. That's a good thing to say right there. Because some yeah. people say, and I'm not seeing progress fast. Well, but every step leads you closer to your victory, man. Yeah, keep going, brother. Yeah, I'm just yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, number, so number two. So number two is budget and track. Ooh, this is a big one, man. Absolutely. So Ooh. the budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Yeah. And for, for years, before we got on a budget, we would always wonder where it went, right? Mm. We, we look back before we had kids, you know, we were double income, no kids for 10 years, making great income, but we have no clue where the money went. Wow. No clue at all, right? We can we can guess, but we have no clue because we weren't on a budget and we didn't track anything. Today, we're on a budget and we track every single thing. Amen. Yeah. So that's for us, we use Dave Ramsey's program called Every Dollar. That's what I use, baby. <laughs> yes, yes. I have it on my phone. Sonya has it on her phone. We sit down on a monthly basis at least once. Multiple, sometimes multiple times just to talk about our money and budget. Yeah. Hey, right. you, you know what? You should stay there. Hey, you just said something key for the couples. Yes. Communication. You knew you knew I was going to say it. <laughs> Communication is key. <laughs> you don't want to see boxes and things hidden in the closet or other things. You got to communicate. Exactly. <laughs> you know? and, and we do that. You know, also me too. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Even today, I mean, because we track all of our expenses, I mean, there's there's great visibility in, and accountability into what, what I'm buying, what she's buying. Yes. Right. I mean, we have that great, great communication when it comes to money there. Right. And she's, she's watching this live stream right now. So if I say something out of place, I mean, she's going to correct me. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's, it was awesome. And I tell you, for us, the, the most exciting thing about this, and you kind of hit on it, Steve, is as a couple, when you're working together, with your spouse, yes, with a common goal, yes, that is so powerful. Come on, man, that's what I'm talking that about. So we have that common goal, that, that unified couple, but you can you can accomplish anything together. And and for us, that was one of the reasons why we ran so fast because mm -hmm. we were in agreement with the decision we were going to make. That the agreement, Michael. That's right. Yes. When you are on the same page, that yes. is so critical mm -hmm. right there because you know I, I didn't get married i don't need a roommate exactly i want a lover someone who is passionately involved and, and engaged in our goals and that's so important for those who are married you know you make a mental note of that one yes because you run so much faster as a couple that that unity is powerful yes sir and, and it's <laughs> and i know for me when i started having those discussions with my wife i actually saved money and made wiser spending decisions because I would have to think about it first and then go talk to her about it. But she would be like, oh, I saw, you know, I actually saw that on sale over here. Or I heard about this product that may be better. And yeah. so that communication was just was powerful. Yes. It is. Yes, sir. I, I love that unity. So I encourage you. So if you are, you know, a couple, sit down and talk about your goals and, and, and talk about budgeting and track your expenses. Yeah. And don't feel bad. Don't be ashamed. Like, you know, it, it's. You make mistakes, you fall short, but you encourage each other. Yes. You lift each other up. You change because the thing is, it's behavior modification. Mm -hmm. You're changing your behavior. Once you've made the decision, you change your behavior and you execute as a couple. Yes. All right. And I know this scene, you know, the process you and Kim went through with, with her book, you know, how you guys are working together as a couple, right? And you use your strengths. Yeah. You, know, you have strengths in the area of marketing. So you make sure you use it. I mean, that's that's powerful that to show that support and Sonya does a lot of support for me as well with everything. So, I mean, that's, that's powerful. You know, we have bad days too. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not going, I'm not, you know, how everybody posts on Facebook, their life is so great. Well, yeah. people back the curtain. <laughs> but you understand what the goal is, right? So you goal, right. Back towards that unity. And that's it, man. When you have the goal, it makes the bad days not so bad. In fact, the bad days are really transformative because really you're changing. You're yes. growing. And so it's really not detrimental to your relationship. And ultimately, you're going to reach your goal. So, yeah. All right, man. Keep going. Man. I want to hold you up. I no, so that was you. number two. Have a budget and track your expenses. I track. We try to track anything. If I, Especially when we were getting out of debt. If I went to the vending machine and spent a dollar, I would track it. Because I wanted to know exactly where my money was going. Yes, sir. 
It's very important. So number three is all about the debt snowball. Ooh, this is so Dave good. Ramsey talks about this. He says the debt snowball is a method, is a debt reduction strategy where you pay off your debt in order from smallest to largest, gaining momentum as you knock out each balance. Mm. When the smallest debt is paid in full, you roll the money you were paying on that debt into the next smallest balance. It mm. is a powerful concept. I, I absolutely love the debt snowball. Yeah. And to be honest with you, when we first started with it and we looked at it, there were some cases where it didn't make sense to, to go from smallest to largest because of interest. Right, but right, right. About that. He said, it's, don't, don't focus on the math. Focus on the momentum that you create. Right. Good and point. once we started doing that, that momentum was powerful. Good point. Good point. Right. I mean, so it started and it started rolling and rolling and rolling, but it is powerful. Arnica, you said tracking is hard. I tell you, it's so worth it, Arnica. I mean, it's it does take discipline. And I can understand there's certain personality types that don't like doing those little detail type things, but you'll love it. You'll be amazed at when you track your spending. You'll be like, why did I spend money on that? You know, I spent ten dollars on that and now it's not getting used. Why did I do that? And it'll definitely help free up some money for you. Look, look, listen to this question from Horace. OK, um, what about debt consolidation? Ooh, <laughs> no. Unless you absolutely have to. Here's here's what happened with debt consolidation. So let's say I have 10 cars at a thousand dollars each. And I said, well, I'm going to lump that into one easy payment of a of hundred thousand dollars. And let's make that payment. Number one, it's going to be boring doing that. So, so you're not going to get that the win of paying off those small balances. So, but really what it does is it, it kind of tricks you to make you think you've accomplished something. I remember when we were in our FPU class, one of the first ones, one of the people in our group, she consult, somebody had told her about consolidation. She went and consolidated all her debt and came back to the class thinking she had accomplished something. And our facilitator was like, you really haven't changed anything, right? You, you've kind of changed the numbers a little bit. You might've reduced the interest a little bit, maybe, but there's no win there. Yeah. The debt snowball will create so much momentum as you're paying things off. I don't care if it's $500 first and the next one is $1,000. You're paying it off. It creates that momentum and you start checking it off and you can see progress. Yes. When you're just doing a big payment, like for us right now, we're still working to pay our, our mortgage off, our home off. And so that is a boring process. We love it, you know, because we're still making progress, but it is it's boring marking, you know, mortgage payments off. Because it takes a, it takes a lot longer than just hitting your debt. So I would say, do not do debt consolidation if you can. Yeah, don't do it. And and the other point too is that you're changing your you're changing your behavior in the process. Yes. And once you have developed that habit, it's with you. And so that's the key too. So that sense of accomplishment, like Sonia just said, get, mm -hmm. you know, the, the false sense of accomplishment with the consolidation, but the snowball gives you the real. Um, satisfaction and success yes yes yeah and lucinda said you know consolidation gives you a bigger debt to tackle yep. yeah yeah you know, it's like point. focus on the small pieces yes it's gonna work out so much better really good point lucinda yeah that's 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 good right there yeah all right so yeah that's an example of the debt snowball looks like so one of the things when we're talking about Anytime we're talking about money, you always have people that come to you and say, you know, well, is that is that is it biblically OK to talk about money? You know, is that a godly thing to talk about? All right. So I just want to share with you guys a few scriptures that really helped us. I mean, we never really had a problem with money, but I like to let people other people know that the Bible does talk about money a whole lot. And it, and it does talk about getting out of debt and and. and Thinking differently. So you, you you brought up the Bible, <laughs> man. Mercy. That too, man. Okay, okay. The first one is from Proverbs 27, 12. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. Hmm. The skeleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. So, so in my mind, this is really talking about having a savings, having a reserve, and, and really planning your future versus just buying, buying, buying with no, not think about any consequences of the future. You know, it's interesting you're saying right here is that you can control your future. Peter Drucker said the best way to predict the future is to create it. Yes. And yes. so even if it's incremental changes that you're making, you're actually making a better tomorrow by doing those little things today. 
-hmm. but you have to look ahead. You have to make the decision. And if you're married, you have to work together. That's awesome, man. Yes. So that's the first one here. Second one, a wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spends whatever he gets. That's from Proverbs 21, 20. And, and I tell you, before we started following Dave Ramsey's program, we were the foolish man because we would spend as soon as we got it, it was gone. Right. We, we spent a lot of money that we didn't even have. You know, we would say, OK, I'm going to get a raise next year. So let me spend this money now because the raise is going to cover it or the bonus is going to cover it. And that's kind of how we were living, which is why we started getting more and more debt, deeper in debt, deeper in debt, deeper in debt. Because you know what, we think we're going to pay it off. You know what's interesting? Like, and this is for people who may feel bad right now. They don't know where they are. The, the whole premise of this is to make you self-aware because you can't, you know, change yourself until you know yourself. Mm -hmm. So this is the first step. OK, so don't beat up on yourself. Don't be discouraged or any of those negative narratives that we play in our head. But then once you hear it, <laughs> embrace it all the way. Like you said in the beginning, make the decision, baby. Shoot yeah, the ball, decision. right? Forward. <laughs> Shoot the ball and you'll get all the encouragement in the world to keep going. So absolutely, ahead, man. I want to share a fourth tip with you guys that really helped us out. Having multiple streams of income. And and Chris Hogan on the day, part of the Dave Ramsey team, he talks about different ways of, of building passive income on their website. You can look that up, but it's, it's so important to have multiple streams of income. I know for me, I look at, I can even look at last year. I had four different sources of income that I'm going to have to, that I'm filing on my taxes just because I understand that concept. I can only do so much at my job. It's great, but I had to get myself in that position where you know, I can add extra income. You know, I can use my gifts, my skills, and I can take advantage of opportunities to earn more money. And so that's what I've been doing. I absolutely love it. Mm. And for me, really, what I realized is I just started taking that non-productive time that I had, mm -hmm. maybe watching television or, or just doing whatever and learning how I can take advantage of opportunities to earn income. Yes. M my yes. wife is being taking like Zuma classes, fitness classes for a couple of years. Last year, she made a decision of, hey, I'm going to get certified. Right. So that way she can now start making money as she as she take the classes versus her paying to take the classes. Right. So it's yeah. a big mind shift. For doing that, but it's another stream of income coming to our household. Yes. Yes. The it's, mind it's so shift. And Steve, I know you're all about, you know, having extra, you know, other sorts of income. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> I'm the hustle guy. <laughs> With ideas going and, you know. No. <laughs> I'm always trying to hustle, man. <laughs> um, yeah, Horace just said, I was just about to ask about income. So just the job isn't going to get you out of debt. You know, and I guess the situation is different, but we're just encouraging you to consider, yeah. you know, the options. Right. It's, it's You want to go faster. I yeah. mean. Your job, if you if you're making enough money in your job and you're budgeting correctly, you can't get out of debt with just your job income. Yes, that's. that's I mean, as, as soon as we started budgeting our money, we had enough income coming in to make it work. I mean, we had to cut a lot of things out first. <laughs> I mean, so our budget got tight, but we were able to make it work. <laughs> but adding extra really allows you to invest more, or pay down your debt faster, or save up more. Yes. Yes, that's it, man. That's right. That's so, it. So great, great question. So the last thing I want to leave you with is I love this scripture from Proverbs, you know, six, six to eight. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider it way, consider it ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provision in the summer and gathers its food at harvest. Right. And so that's a great example for us. Take advantage. I know for me, 2020, I made a decision that since I'm going to be home because of COVID, I'm going to take an opportunity to, to really grow myself as much as possible, take advantage of opportunities, you know, grow my business. And that's really what I did. I, I spoke more in 2020 than I did in 2019. I, I took advantage of more opportunity in 2020 than I did in 2019. Yes, sir. And it's just because you know, I'm following this principle here. Like I, I didn't sit home and say, 
okay, I'm home because of COVID. I can't go anywhere. So I'm just going to watch TV and catch up on binge watch Netflix. Right, right, right. But, you know, that, that wasn't my goal. My goal was to ensure that I was as productive as possible. Yes, sir. Yes. And I'm the same way, Stephen. I mean, you guys, look what you guys accomplished in 2020. You know, it's yes, like sir. when other people were sitting down trying to figure out what to do, you guys did things. Yes. So what's the, say? the queen said, you can get out of debt with your job, but we no longer want to pull all of our financial eggs, put all of our financial eggs in one basket, whether it be income or investments. That's right. So, you know, diversifying gives you options because you don't know what the future holds. Listen, Michael, man, I love you, my brother. I really appreciate you taking time to drop that knowledge on us and encourage us and help us on our way. You are welcome, brother. Um, and, uh, you know, Michael Pope is a certified John Maxwell coach, speaker and trainer. Um, you can learn more about some of the things he's doing. Michael, what's your um, your website? Man, I really want to give you a shout out. Um, what is it? Sure. Um, Michael J. Pope Jr. dot com. Michael J. Pope Jr. dot com. And I'll put it on the page. Don't worry about that. So you can track them down and get some more wisdom. Listen, man, I really appreciate you, man. And I hope you and the queen keep doing great things. Uh, we want to thank yeah. all our viewers tonight uh, for watching. Listen, take yeah. your cues from Michael <laughs> and get out of debt. <laughs> Next cue. You can do it, guys. Thank you. Take care. Have a great night, everybody.